dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky. This is WYMT Mountain News Weekend Edition. Good evening, I am Olivia Calfee. Some flood survivors were moved from their travel trailers in Crockettsville to Buckhorn State Park on Friday due to the cold. WYMT's Chandler Wilcox caught up with one family to hear how the uncertainties of this year have led Christmas to being just not the same. Buckhorn Lake State Resort Park has been a shelter for flood survivors since late July, and they have taken on even more after the Arctic blast hit Friday. With water lines being froze and ensuing evacuation happening so fast, what little Christmas spirit they had in their trailers was left behind. What little presents we did have, the kids didn't, we didn't have really have time to bring nothing. Like We didn't have too much time to, you know, evacuate or whatever. What they do have is a temporary cabin at the park with a Christmas movie on display. But the usual early morning excitement was actually a painful reminder. The adults, you know, we're different. We've done and grew up out of a lot of stuff, but like I said, what little stuff they did have. We didn't have a, really no money to buy much, but, you know, what stuff they had, they didn't even get to open it. What continues to be on their minds is the hard task of finding a new permanent home after losing everything they owned. Josh made money in the past by logging and other handy work, but the cold has made job seeking difficult. But we've got to find a place, you know, to rent, which I ain't got the money to rent a place, or fix our house back, which I ain't got the money to fix the house back, neither. While the Cockerham family is happy to be together this holiday weekend, the Christmas thrill is instead a chill. And Buckhorn Chandler Wilcox, WYMT Mountain News. There is no official timetable for when the flood survivors can move back into their campers. Well, it is rather chilly throughout the region tonight. However, we are continuing to see slowly warming conditions as we head through the next couple of days. Here's where we are right now. A look outside. London Corbett Airport is still chilly and snow covered there on the tarmac. Uh, they are at 11 degrees. Hazards at 18. You can see some melting we saw a little bit earlier on today. Pikeville peaceful as well at this hour. Temperatures and wind chills throughout the region. You'll notice in many spots those temperatures and those wind chills are the same. That means we're not dealing with nearly the amount of gusty winds that we have been dealing with in many spots. This is where we ended up today. We actually ended up fifth coldest Christmas on record at London. Jackson just missed it at 25, but we also should point out the second white Christmas in three years. Officially, they had one inch of snow depth at the weather service in Jackson this morning at the observation. So that goes down as a white Christmas at Jackson, which is the only snowfall measuring site in the region. One thing we're watching, we're watching that little clipper system moving in from the west. Shouldn't affect us tonight, but as we head into tomorrow, that could bring us a few snow showers back to the region. For us tonight, clouds on the increase will slowly get to about 20 as we head into tomorrow morning. Details on when we finally get back to some uh, warmer activity in a few minutes. Olivia. Thank you, Evan. While many of us had the opportunity to be at home with our loved ones this Christmas, countless first responders were out tending to crashes, fires, or other situations. WYMT's Alyssa Williams spoke to a few first responders about what the holidays can look like for them and the tips we should follow to have a happy, healthy, and safe Christmas. For first responders like Perry County paramedic Wanda Miller, working on a holiday is nothing new. People seek. Usually somebody dies, usually somebody's house burns, there's always car accidents, and you have to deliver bad news to everybody on Christmas. That's the bad part. And for Nathan Kirby with the Corbin Fire Department, he says he sees more of these situations happening during the holidays. For some reason, it just feels like on Thanksgiving or Christmas, there is a little extra going on, and I think that's more about people traveling the roads, people congregating in areas and all that going on. So it does add to our call volume. And with the white Christmas we're experiencing across the region, both Kirby and Miller are advising everyone to be extra cautious on the roadways. Watch the roads, you know, just be careful. And if it's real sleek and you don't feel comfortable, don't get on the roads. You know, you get behind people and they're doing 10 mile an hour. Well, if you're that scared, stay home. 
Miller adds that sidewalks and porches can also become a hazard in weather like this. Be careful falling. Older people fall and they break hips, the ice, trying to go to people's houses and ramps are real slick. And although both Kirby and Miller are happy to help anyone who needs their assistance, it is important to only call a first responder if it is an emergency. Just because we're EMS doesn't mean, or police or fire, doesn't mean, oh, well, I need some cigarettes at the grocery, let's get us a ride. It doesn't mean that. You, you know, if you don't have food or you don't have kerosene, one of us will bring you all something. I mean, a first responder will come and help at any cost, but just be cur courteous. Helping everyone to have a happy, healthy, and safe holiday season. Alyssa Williams, WYMT Mountain News. Wanda, Wanda Miller with Perry County EMS says she hopes everyone can remain patient when receiving assistance from first responders. Although they try to be as quick as they can, when being called somewhere, they also have to be cautious when traveling on icy roads. The Arctic freeze is also causing problems for businesses. A water line burst at the Wayne County Public Library last night. The Mont Monticello Fire Department says about 5,000 gallons of water was dumped onto the floor and spread throughout the library. Officials say they lost about 3,000 books to water damage. Along with burst pipes, this winter storm has brought large-scale power outages to Kentucky. On Friday night, crews with Kentucky Utilities implemented sporadic outages to prevent widespread issues. By early Saturday morning, there were still around 43,000 Kentuckians still left in the dark. The situation is much better today. The outage map shows about 640 customers without power in Kentucky. There are around 250 outages in Lawrence County. Utility officials are urging people to conserve energy this Christmas. If you absolutely have to go out, officials say make sure you do not get caught without extra gloves, blankets, a first aid kit, windshield scraper, and jumper cables. A bag of sand or cat litter is also good to have on hand in case you need help getting traction under your tires when trying to get out of a jam. You will also want to bring a flashlight, phone charger, and batteries. For most, Christmas means getting to stay home and spend time with loved ones, but some do not get the day off. As Samantha Valentino shows us, for first responders, Christmas usually means more. Calls to respond to. We have uh, had a whole lot of runs uh, in the past 24 to 48 hours that have involved uh, fire alarm soundings, and busted water pipes. Major Hound says the influx of these calls is due to the extreme cold temperatures. And this particular storm has been a little bit different than normal because the freeze occurred so quickly that a lot of buildings, their pipes uh, have not had a chance to adjust to the sudden temperature change. Well, now those pipes are starting to thaw out a little bit. And so we have had a lot of situations where the pipes are busting. On Christmas Eve, most of their 167 responses were related to busted water pipes. In a normal year when the weather is a little bit better during the holidays, we will see an increase in uh, smoke alarm soundings in residences because of people not cooking too well. Um, occasionally, we will see building fires because of cooking-related emergencies. But throughout the winter season, they see an increase in fires related to people not using heating devices properly. For example, furnace malfunctions because they don't change their filters often enough, or someone using an improvised heating device to heat their home, such as using a space heater and getting it too close to combustibles, setting off a fire. So what can you do to make sure you're safe this holiday weekend? First and foremost, if you are cooking on your stovetop, make sure that you have a lid for your pan, that in case you do have a fire in the pan, you can cover it. Major Hounds recommends keeping a fire extinguisher and a phone nearby, as well as having a plan in place in case of an emergency. In Lexington, Samantha Valentino, WKYT. If you are visiting Archer Park in Prestonsburg, there is a special section among the light displays. It pays tribute to the fallen Floyd County officers who lost their lives in the July shooting. 25,000 lights and several markers honor Captain Ralph Frazier, Deputy William Petrie, Officer Jacob Chaffins, and K-9 Drago. Organizers say this is the least they can do to honor those who gave the ultimate sacrifice. We wanted to do something to honor 
our officers that we lost back in July. Um, it's just very touching for us. It was, it was a hard time for Floyd County, a um, hard time for Prestonsburg. We worked with two of the city officers very closely and we just wanted to do something in their honor. If you want to see the memorial or the other light displays, Archer Park will be open until New Year's Day from around 5.30 to 10 p.m. Spreading Christmas cheer one interaction at a time here in the mountains. It's been a tough year for the Prestonsburg Police Department. You just saw in the last story, they are remembering a fallen hero, Officer Jacob Chaffins, who was killed in the line of duty during a shooting this summer. In this video posted to social media, officers handing out Christmas joy in the community in the form of $50 Food City gift cards. In this clip, you can see individuals thanking the officers with handshakes, hugs. Some are completely shocked. Others are very excited. Dollywood officials decided to close the park on Friday due to the freezing temperatures. Park officials say they will be reopening the park on Monday at 1 p.m. as they allow staff to prepare for guests. Dollywood attracts more than 3 million people each year. We'll be right back with weather. WYMT News app offers.